a government can fail its people to protect its people. That can happen. And nobody wants that to happen. But we're, what we are addressing is a government lying to the people. And the, having evidence that it was an Al-Qaeda-linked attack directly from people on the ground and going with analysts back home who took out or went with a story that was, I would say, less strong. You want to use the word tenuous? Yes, more tenuous, certainly, than the direct account from eyewitnesses on the ground, like Gregory Hicks, calling it an attack, a terrorist attack, saying no protest. That all said, it leads us to the question of Michael Morell and his testimony. Here was part of his testimony on Wednesday. Roll it. You also took out Islamic extremists. Yeah, I did not take out extremists. I took out the word Islamic in front of extremists. I took it out because um, we were dealing with protests and demonstrations across much of the Muslim world as a result of the video. And the last thing I wanted to do was to do anything to further inflame those passions. How does mentioning Al-Qaeda disclose classified sources? So what I was told, what I was told, Chairman, was that the only way we knew that was from classified sources. I have to tell you, that confuses me greatly. Al-Qaeda removed because of the classified sources. And that, that seems odd. Going with a YouTube video that was relatively unknown, or little known to say the least, injecting more energy into that and certainly more publicity, to which the president of Libya was responded like Gregory Hicks did when he heard it from Susan Rice on five Sunday shows as his d- jaw dropped. That all said, Lindsey Graham... Senate Intelligence Committee, and Foreign Relations Committee, pardon me, explained why they are investigating this and why this matters. Roll it. Well, here's the point we're trying to make, that the original talking points got it right. Al-Qaeda involvement, Islamic extremist, attacked our consulate. It was a terrorist attack. By the time Mike Morrell got through with the document, Al-Qaeda was deleted, extremist stood without Islamist, and a demonstration was mentioned, and there's no evidence on the ground from people who lived through the Benghazi attack. State Department or CIA folks were telling headquarters in Washington there was no protest, quit saying this. So the big deal here is that the original talking points were altered in a way to create a false story about what happened in Benghazi, uh, supportive to the uh, political ambitions of the president seven weeks before an election. And for, for us to believe that Mike Morrell overrode all the information coming from his people on the ground and ri- relied on an analyst who came up with a story beneficial to the White House by accident is just insulting to everyone's intelligence. So the senator made his case about the credibility of Mr. Morrell. And in this long clip, but it explains a lot, because some of you are sitting there going, you're trying to make something out of nothing. No, we have a lie. When the president says on October 16th, he called it a terrorist attack in the Rose Garden that morning, separated by four paragraphs in context, the morning of the September 12th, September 12th, later he is asked about the fact that he did not call it an act of terrorism. Interesting. Remember that debate? That's why it was such a big deal. He had two stories going and 60 minutes covered for him. Pretty sick. That's why we do beat the press. 
with all that said, we shift to the fact that we have our UN ambassador on five Sunday shows call it an inspire a protest that was inspired by a YouTube video outrage that morphed into a an attack when eyewitnesses said no it did not and they had evidence to the contrary. They knew from the get go that it was an attack. So what do we make of someone like Mike Morrell, who served President Bush, who was the deputy CIA director and became active CIA director. What do we make of all that? Roll it. They called the FBI and the FBI protested very vigorously. So nobody from the FBI ever called me to complain. I didn't wait until I heard that the FBI was upset before I corrected the record. I corrected the record as soon as I found out. How many people in this town do that? So he had told you that the FBI changed the talking points in that meeting, correct? Number one, Susan Rice asked to meet with the three of us. She invited Morrell. We didn't invite Morrell. And his job there was to convince us that Susan Rice's story on 16 September was the best evidence available. No evidence of an Al-Qaeda attack, a protest caused by a hateful video. We now know that was not the best evidence available. That was a manufactured story. I asked him point blank, do you know who changed the talking points? This is in November 2012. He answers that he believed the FBI took out all references to Al-Qaeda. He got us onto the Al-Qaeda uh, uh, deletion. And he told us the FBI deleted the references to Al-Qaeda because they did not want to compromise an ongoing investigation. We found that to be very strange. Senator McCain also asked Mr. Morrell, why didn't the CIA call the FBI agents who were interviewing the survivors of the attack in Germany on the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th of September? He told Senator McCain the FBI tried to, uh, the CIA tried to call the FBI. Uh, they would not give the information because it was an ongoing criminal investigation. I contacted the FBI about both statements. They denied that they uh, required Al-Qaeda to be taken out of the talking points, and they denied that their agents refused to talk to the CIA about what the survivors had told them. For Mr. Morrell to have corrected the record, he should have told us, I was intimately involved with changing the talking points. Here's why I changed them. And he never said he was involved at all. Uh -huh. He took us down the Al-Qaeda road, and he misled us by not being honest with us about who changed the talking points. This is a guy that if you don't ask the absolute right question, he will mislead you. He's See, that's the point. As we're making our way into this, and I haven't even mentioned the connection to Hillary Clinton and his current job. But here's what you have. You have an election. And the line is, Osama bin Laden's dead, Al-Qaeda's on the run. This totally contradicts that line. Four dead Americans, including an ambassador. Our ambassador. So you have that that would be tremendously damaging. So you, you go with a story that doesn't have a lot of evidence behind it, and you don't go with the story that the eyewitnesses on the ground told you that their intelligence officers, a body blow characterized by Catherine Herridge yesterday on Fox News, or excuse me, on Wednesday, saying about the intelligence community took his testimony as a body blow because they realized that they didn't go with the evidence down the line. No. From their jobs, they're putting their lives on the line for it. He went with another story. Why did he go with that story? Why did he allow for the FBI to be blamed for changing the talking points when he knew better. That's what Graham was pointing to. Senator Graham was pointing to. And those of you who want to turn the other way, that's fine. But I want to speak to the rest of you who identify yourselves as Americans without hyphens. And you don't look at R or D, you look for accountability and truth. Now you tell me why. You have to ask him the questions you do, why he held back on mentioning he changed the talking points, why the FBI was blamed, why he didn't go with the line of evidence that was most credible, and why 
two weeks after when they knew from the get-go that it was an Al-Qaeda-linked terrorist attack, we're still going with a YouTube-inspired protest. Why is the only person in jail for this the filmmaker of an obscure film that now made famous? You can answer those. This is a buffet. You can take it or leave it. But quite frankly, I'm disgusted by people's willful blindness on this issue. Crane Durham's nothing but truth. We owe our soldiers better. We owe this country more than that. Don't ever sacrifice national security and honest government on the altar of politics. Woodward's next. AFR Talk.